The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This is Girls Talk Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw Dating, preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now, your hosts, Christy Scales, Aisha Morrison, Nicole Hutchison, and Jess Navarez. Welcome into Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> We've got a media mashup, different hosts today. I'm Nicole Hutchison, of course, Amber Garcia, Savannah Hugh Moeller, and Mr. Isaiah Stanback, the one and only. What's goody? What's goody, y'all? How y'all feeling? It's be fun. Y'all good? Great. Doing good. Got I feel left out. Here. We don't have the cups. Yeah. Like, we, I, did we get... you have two waters. I didn't bring go. anything. Boom. There oh, you go. Thank you. There you go. See, now yeah. <laughs> Gotta be y'all, y'all cups equal. versus bottles. Yeah. What's good? Yeah. Cups win all the time. All day. <laughs> it's at three o'clock. Three yeah. o'clock shows. Trying to keep it going? This is a new experience right now for me. Extra kick of the yeah. day. Yes. <laughs> This coffee's doing it's doing some nice. It's uh, doing something. <laughs> something. You, you sound like you need something it's in there. <laughs> see, Beamer, they, see, Beamer, they need to call some Black Rifle Company. You know, they, that's what they need. They need to bring that in here. I don't know what they do here at 3 o'clock, but we get the Black Rifle in the AM. I'm crying. All right, y'all, let's, let's talk some Cowboys. Uh, we heard from a lot of the assistants today, um, some of the coordinators, and just I know Scott Tolzien had something to say about Dak Prescott. We were going to roll some sound real quick. Take a listen. For sure, uh, you guys have been here for a while, and that's one of the uh, better parts of Dak's game is uh, playing above what we call the 2.3, kind of the, the natural length of the play. And that definitely came to life against the Chargers. Uh, something that we've been preaching as a squad. It's in every Coach McCarthy system. That's always been a, a big part of the defense, or excuse me, a big part of the offensive plan just because get above that 2.3 and you can distort the defense a little bit. And I thought we did a great job of that. On Monday night. How impressive uh, is it to, to have a quarterback like Dak who can go out there and have a bad game, three interceptions against the 49ers, and one week later go out and, and have one of the best games of the season? Yeah, it speaks to Dak's resilience, and uh, that's one thing I've learned about him in my four years here. He won't find a more resilient dude uh, in football and in life, uh, and that's why we love him, and that's why we uh, – we we embrace him as our leader because of what he brings to the table. Uh, you know, as, as the quarterback of the Cowboys, there's a lot that comes with that, and uh, no one handles it better than him. The words of Scott Tolzien on QB Dak Prescott. Now we're gonna talk about the state of this <laughs> offense, but obviously I want to start with uh, talks about Dak Prescott. I mean, how impressed are you with the way that he kind of bounced back from the last couple of weeks and to put on something great on tape uh, last? This past Monday, Sorry, I, I'm not impressed. Yeah. Um, I think it's the. I mean, it's an expectation. Yeah. I mean, the expectation isn't failure as a, at any position in the league, especially the quarterback position. So I think that he wasn't playing up to the standards that he has set for himself, nor the coaching staff. I would assume has set for him. I think he obviously took some steps backwards in Week Five against the 49ers. He went back to what we saw more of last year, questioning his. You know, questioning what his eyes were seeing, mm-hmm. uh, double pumping. Uh, thrown into coverage, not reading the coverage properly. And I think this most recent week, he bit the bu- bit the bullet a little bit, right? He 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 pulled back on some of the things he was instinctively about to do. I think there were some things that he was going to, some throws he was going to make, some decisions he was going to make that he did prior to that, the week prior to, that he actually said, you know what, I'm going to tuck this ball, I'm going to take this sack, I'm going to live to play another down. So I think that he just improved upon his decision-making, and that's what the expectation is of Dak at that position. Um, you sometimes you got to go backwards and go forward. And I think he did a good job of that. But in terms of uh, being surprised or impressed, no, nah, I just think he yeah. he played a good game. I liked his ability to run the ball a little bit, and that was something he was asked in the press conference after the game. He was just talking about how in the 49ers game, you know, he just was throwing the ball away or just taking the hits. And this week he really went into it knowing that he needed to run the ball a little bit and escape some of those potential Mm -hmm. tackles. And that's what he did, and he ran, and he had 40 rushing yards. So, I mean, not bad, if you ask me, for for this week. Yeah, that's one of his... Abilities. He has the body. He has the legs to run. We know mentally that kind of 
um, limited him in the past after the injury, and that kind of puts. A, and you would know if <laughs> anything happens, how that mental game can happen. But I think to me, the frustrating part or annoying part right now is. You want to give credit where credit is due. Mm -hmm. But fans are going to constantly criticize everything. Mm -hmm. And I get it. You were facing one of the worst defenses in the league. But at the same time, you got to give credit where you see improvement. We've been asking for the run game. We've been asking, especially in the red zone, have him run the freaking ball when yeah. your running backs is not being effective and there's trouble there with the O-line and the running game. But he just felt a little more free. He yeah. felt like somebody mm -hmm. that has been given the ability or the right to just just play football. Go with your instinct. Go with what you feel is right. And I think we finally, and it wasn't there 100%. There were times where maybe there, there were some hesitation, but it was great to see him kind of go back to being himself a little bit. And hopefully we can keep seeing that uh, more of him using his legs and running with the ball and also being very precise on some of those throws. I think I would actually love to see him be more mobile. Um, I think that's what makes a lot of these top QBs so special, like a Jalen Hurts, like a Patty Mahomes. I mean, those guys, they play instinctual football, right? And so it, it, would you guys, let me ask you guys this, would you guys like to see more of that? I know uh, Mike McCarthy said in the press conference that, hey, I'm not going to call 12 run plays for him every week. but you know, At least call 11. At least call 11, right? You got you, you to call a, a little bit just to you know get that offense going. Like Amber said, if that run game's not effective, if your yeah. running backs aren't being effective, would you guys like to see a lot more of that from Dak? You're, you're asking a former quarterback who used to run the ball. So, I mean, yeah. of course. I, as well. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen. Ooh, okay. No, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> Dak's not a pocket passer. Let's yeah. just be real about it. Dak is not best when sitting in the pocket. All right. And so I'm not saying that he doesn't have the capabilities of sitting back there and throwing a ball. We know he does. But that's not where he's best. He's best off of play action. Play action is typically on the move, typically outside the pocket, typically where you could throw the ball while moving. OK. And with the option to run the ball if you decide to pull it down. So that's what I think he's best. So you have to get the running game going in order for him to be even a able to access that aspect of the offense but yes he needs to have some designated runs I'm not saying that he's Lamar Jackson I'm not saying that he's going to be that guy that you yeah. rely on him for the running game um, you know he's that's not the biggest part of this offense you need to get the ball to Tony Pollard but I do believe that you have to put him in a position where he is a threat to run because it puts a whole nother element of stress on the defense and if you're not doing that then you're under much like we've seen other guys on this team Brandon Cook CD Lamb Tony Pollard you're now you under utilizing Dak's abilities yeah, and I think, uh, one, yes, definitely would love to see more of that game, but also more of CeeDee Lamb, yeah. mm -hmm. more of Jake Ferguson, who has completely disappeared, not, by, not because he's playing bad, but they're just not getting him the ball. He's been good when he gets it in his hands. Also, Brandon Cooks, we finally saw some of him, yeah. and we saw how well that was. So more so than seeing more of Dak in that way, it's also more seeing more of everybody else on offense mm -hmm. that we just till this moment we haven't seen it at full goal with everybody just making plays and clicking all together mm -hmm. no I'm with you there and I think a little goes a long way if Dak can run the ball a little bit go for it because you know what that's a few extra yards for us and it just gets us to where we need to be but almost to your point yeah we need to still have some consistency as far as uh giving it to tony pollard and i really liked uh, what rico daddle did too i mean he had some good plays in there as well so it's really just the rotations um as well as dak still being able to run a little bit i loved how you brought in cd and b cooks getting some action in there that was great to see them um but Let's talk about some of those offensive struggles, guys, with mm -hmm. Michael Gallup. Oh, what was that? <laughs> oh, oh, no. I mean, we're, we're going to still talk about the good, but we, we got to also throw in, you know. There was a whole lot of bad, too. There was a whole lot of bad. There was a whole lot of bad. We're going to get to that, uh, actually, right now. Um, <laughs> Michael Gallup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> Michael Gallup. <clears throat> I remember in the studio... <laughs> I'm like this way. <laughs> when we were Are you watching, <laughs> nervous <laughs> over here. Oh my god! When we were watching the game, um, you're seeing DBs key in on CD and B Cooks, right? Because they know that those are the real playmakers. And you were explaining to me that Michael doesn't have that first explosive step off the line of scrimmage, right? So he's not really a threat 
to a lot of a lot of guys. So so how do you improve that to make it make him more of a threat? I, I guess I could kind of say that. I mean, it's going to sound Bella, very elementary or even more common as what we've been talking about as of recent. You have to put him on a move. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, Michael Gallup is not the same player he was prior to his knee injury. That's mm-hmm. facts. Now, whether that's his physical inability um, and restrictions that he has because of the knee uh, or it's a mental block. Either way, um, I've been in that position before and I know that that can be a struggle mentally, but we don't know. right? We don't know. We're not in there with Britt Brown and those guys to know if is it a physical limitation or a mental limitation. Either way, it's limiting his ability to be out there and be productive. So I think that you have to put him on a move because what teams are starting to do is teams are starting to put hands on him at the line of scrimmage. And even though he used to possess the ability to get guys' hands off him at the line of scrimmage, boom, burst, accelerate, now go out there and make the big play, he's no longer seemingly does not possess that ability to get guys' hands off him, right, to be agile out the line of scrimmage and be shifty to not get stuck at the line of scrimmage. And then at the top of the route, he's getting stuck. And when I say getting stuck, I mean it's taking longer for him to get out of his routes than it should. Um, you want to see guys kind of, you know, one, two, three, boom, get out the route, right? He's kind of – is he's really throttling down and he's struggling to get out. Mm-hmm. Typically, receivers, especially versus off coverage, receivers are able to run, call it a curl, okay? Run 12 to 14 yards, put your foot in the ground, boom, come back straight back to the quarterback. You typically always have the advantage versus off coverage because you're breaking before the DB breaks, mm-hmm. right? You're breaking before the DB can respond and react to you. But if you are d- delayed, in coming out of your break, now those DBs that are paid to get come out of breaks, and you know relatively quickly, they're now closing that gap, right? So when when you were possibly open, you're no longer open, and I think that's where I'm seeing the biggest struggle at right now for Michael Gallup is just at the at the top of the routes, you know, whether it be a, a comeback or or a curl or any of those like in or out breaking routes, he's just it just doesn't seem like it's there, yeah. um, and it's it's sad to see. But that doesn't mean that he can't be productive. You just can't. You have to have. You have to change your perspective and change your expectations of a player when they have those limitations. So put him in a position to be successful. Who would you guys like to see if, if that? Okay, if that boils down to him not being able to prove that he can be successful, then who would you guys like to see kind of get those those reps? Well, I think Over? for me, well, to me, the problem with Gallup is really consistency. And going along with everything you just said, we have seen those moments where he's a very, very skilled wide receiver. Mm-hmm. He had a good game against Arizona. Yep. Mm-hmm. And he has those moments, but it's just is not showing up back to back. And you're yeah. not going to scare any anybody after you put on, on tape what happened yeah. Monday night, where it just became something that you're like forcing the ball to him and it's right. not working. And by this, and to me, I go with like... I like feeling vibes a lot. I'm like, what am I feeling? What's the vibe here? The vibe. Laugh about it. I don't care. <laughs> but the vibe is CeeDee Lamb was having a great game. So, therefore, okay, how do I get the ball more to him in this game? And I'm taking it game by game type of cases. Mm-hmm. Not every, you know. Mm-hmm. Get the ball to the guy that's having a successful game. CeeDee, then you got, again, I, I mentioned the tight ends. We know by history, in Dak's career, he tends to really rely on his tight ends. Mm-hmm. That has always been like the safety blanket for him. And it's just not there right now. So I would say, yes, I definitely want to see more passes to C.D. Lamb, Brandon Cooks. But C- uh, Michael Gallup, he just he needs to be better. And maybe it's... <laughs> Maybe it's the coming back from the injury or something, but yeah. either way, they just uh, they gotta figure something out. It's just the the consistency is just not there. I wouldn't say that there's anyone else, in my opinion, that is gonna be able to step into some, that slot for him. I still think he's our guy. Mm-hmm. I think he just he knows what he needs to do going into our next game against the Rams. And you know, like you said, he was great in Arizona, uh, 92 uh, yards there for him. And then, I mean, obviously this week he only had three catches on 10 targets. Yeah. He knows, you know. Let's that reiterate that three up. catches on 10 targets. I Savannah, I think we gotta like sit on that for a quick second. That's good in baseball. <laughs> It's good in baseball. It's really good in baseball. Um, <laughs> listen, Michael Gallup is still a very productive receiver. Mm-hmm. Again, you just have to change what your expectations are of him. And you can't ask him to do things that he can't do right now or hasn't shown you that he can do consistently. So 
that's what these coaches get paid for. Every every receiver has limitations. Every single receiver yeah. has limitations. Everybody that's on that field has something that they don't do well. Yeah. Right. So understanding what he's facing right now, just lean on what he does very well. Right. Versus Arizona, they weren't playing a whole lot of press. So guess what? Slant routes and things of that nature. He was winning on them. Awesome. He's still gonna. He's he's a contested catch it guy. He's gonna make those contested catches. He he lives for that. He wants to go up there and eat the you know eat off somebody's helmet, eat some cereal off somebody's helmet. He wants to make the tough slants. But if he doesn't have the leverage and he doesn't have the space, then mm-hmm. it's not the probability is not gonna be high. But I still think he's a productive guy. He just understand what the situation is and understand what his limitations are. All right. Well, we will be right back. We are going to be taking a break for a quick second. You're watching Girls Talk Boys Talk presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. We'll be right back. We know that juicy, cheesy, grilled-to-perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. Pepsi, baby! The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like, well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola a journey to Foodopia. Burgers, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. At Jigsaw Dating, we obviously want the Cowboys to bring that sixth ring home. But to be honest, we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger. That's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation, so you can date deeper. Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. Join Jigsaw Dating today, dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. to the SWBC studio. You're watching Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and Rally Days, presented by SeatGeek. Give NFL fans an experience of a lifetime the day prior to Dallas Cowboys home games. On October 28th, enjoy activities at Miller Lighthouse. Get a behind-the-scenes tour of AT&T Stadium and more. Visit attstadium.com slash rally days for more information to get your tickets today. I've never been to a rally day, so I don't know. They're pretty cool. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. Mm. Lots of fans, honestly, come the mm. day before a home game. I've they heard. just want to come tour the stadium, get some merch before the game. They have, like, DCC. They sign autographs, alumni players. Mm. So it's actually not a bad event. Have you guys been to a rally day? I have not. Oh. You should go. <laughs> I'm not, but go. Go. It's you fun. Go. I hear it's a blast. Okay. <laughs> but I also work on weekends and do oh, other yeah. stuff. So when I get a day off, I get a day off. She had a job. <laughs> <laughs> she got money. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's, let's get this talk going. Um, let's, let's still talk about these receivers uh, and how this offense is kind of taking the strides they need to be – improved by the time the Rams come here to AT&T Stadium. Um, I, I remember in the studio again watching the game and Isaiah was kind of explaining, you know, how... Sorry. You probably don't want to watch was, no more games. With no, me. I do. No, I do. It's, it's He's really helpful. Yeah. at explaining everything. Yeah, like he really I, is. He really does help um, with, you know, the X's and O's, really just understanding it. And so we were noticing how, um, of course, the Cowboys were lo- using a lot more motion, mm-hmm. uh, motioning CD. Uh, so defenses were kind of, you know, not understanding where he is, where he's lined up. Um, is, is that something that they went away from that in the second half, by the way? But is that something that you feel can help um, this Cowboys team when they are taking on a team like the Rams and the Eagles and heading down the stretch of the season? Yeah, anybody. Right? Yeah. It doesn't matter who you're facing. I mean, these defensive coordinators get paid a lot of money. And if you are running a very vanilla and elementary offense, even if it's a super complex offense, mm-hmm. but you make it, you line up, and just, just walk out there and line up once you break the huddle, these guys are getting paid to shut that down. Mm-hmm. That's the reality. Every single play is a chess match. So you have to approach it as if those guys are the smartest ones at the stadium. And if they're the smartest ones at the stadium, then guess what? I need to confuse them at least a little bit. right? I need to give my guys as much insight, as much information as possible. So when you put somebody in motion, when you when you shift on offense, um, you're, you're now not only giving your entire offense – 
a different look, right? Because now the offensive lineman, maybe the D-line shifts. Okay, now guess what? Our pa- our, our blocking responsibilities change. Whether it's block, or whether it's pass, whether it's run, even somebody shift over half a man, that changes absolutely everything in terms of what your responsibilities are, how you're working with the man that's next to you. Linebackers shift over. Okay, that changes the entire front. The secondary, okay, is the safety's rolling this way. I know there's one time where C.D. Lamb went in motion and there's going to be a safety down to the left. And when he motioned across, all of a sudden the, the safety shifted to the opposite direction and he ended up running a slant and it opened up something that would not have been there had he not went in motion. So there's a lot of little intricacies that take place in pre-snap plays that you're continually gaining information. The quarterback is digesting how who's moving, who's shifting. The center is looking at, okay, what's my blocking scheme? What can I communicate over? The linebackers, right, the running backs, everybody, yeah, I might be blocking over here on the left linebacker, but all of a sudden they shifted over. Now my responsibility is over here on the right side. So there's so much that takes place that most people just don't understand as to why you make those adjustments prior to the snap. And when you look at it, at the top five offenses in the NFL today, Every single one of those offenses are doing a ton of motions, yeah. a ton of shifts pre-snap. Mm-hmm. And it is, it's not by chance. Mm-hmm. It's because you give yourself leverage, you give yourself better blocking angles, you give yourself better um, better uh, route concepts versus coverages. There's a lot of things that you can do to improve the probability of having a successful play when you move guys around. Yeah, you're seeing that with the Dolphins. You're seeing that with the 49ers, the Eagles. I forgot the other two. Chargers. The char- there we yeah. go, the Chargers. Um, what, what, what did you guys like from that? Um, if, if you guys want to chime into that. Well, I was just going to say, yeah. perfect perfect example that yeah. we've all watched, 49ers. When the Cowboys faced the 49ers, we saw it. All the motions, all the switches, every single time before the snap, yeah. which is freaking annoying. I was sitting there, I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, stop it. And then you don't see the Cowboys doing it, but you see how effective it can be. Mm-hmm. So, and... I hear it all the time. This is a copycat league. So why can you not begin to incorporate some of those um, strategies Mm -hmm. and moves to help your offense to give something or try to uh, throw the defense off a little bit into what you're going to do? Because, again, you talk about those teams that have been having a successful season so far. Why can you do it too? And I don't know if that falls into the whole West Coast new offense <laughs> type of scheme mm-hmm. or not. But uh, if it ain't working, you you got to change it up or see who's doing it better and mm-hmm. try to see how you can copy it because nobody cares about copying in, in this league. Yeah. Just do it if it's working. What I appreciated in this game against the Chargers was the Cowboys – From the 49ers game, they were 100% outcoached. And I think Coach McCarthy made the right calls this week. Mm -hmm. He knew what he was doing, especially going up against Kellen Moore, who you know is going to, you know, have an insane offensive scheme Mm -hmm. for the Chargers. And the whole game, it was back and forth the entire time. Offense, offense, offense. And I just think... Coach McCarthy, it comes down to him. He made the right calls this week. Yeah, most definitely. Let's switch over to his offensive line, guys. I knew you were gonna, That's why I looked at you. <laughs> I knew your face was going to change. Ah, uh, man. All right. Well, uh, this offensive line, the prophesized offensive line, that's the words of Tyler Smith, by the way. Um, and still a lot of respect for that line. Uh, but now they rank 13th in the league in pass blocking efficiency, um, giving up 55 pressures, 38 QB hurries. Um What's y'all's thoughts so far? Only two weeks back. You know, those, they, yeah. they actually got their first full week of practice last week. So, I mean, we still got to give them a break, cut them some slack. Uh, but, but oh. never mind. No. <laughs> you know what? I think we're going to, down okay. the line, we're going to find out, like, all the injuries and pains that they've been dealing with. And we'll be like, oh, actually, they weren't so bad. Or, you know, like, that's what I'm, that's the only thing that is, that would justify it in my mind. Yeah. And I've, I've talked about it on, on the break a whole lot with, you're seeing so many individual mistakes, mm-hmm. guys that have the experience, guys that um, <clears throat> you consider starters, that you consider good. And they've been on one-on-ones, they've been thrown on the ground and you're like, whoa, what happened there? So they're getting beat mm-hmm. by like strength and, and also execution with the technique and everything. So right now, the only thing that either 
another thing that keeps yeah. getting brought up is the consistency with them practicing all together. It's been two weeks, and I my understanding, what people keep telling me, is you need X amount of time for everybody to just be on the same page and start clicking. But again, these are all guys that you consider good individually, but individually they haven't been. So the point is, maybe there's injuries that are that they're just they're just struggling what's your problem <laughs> what are you looking I, I, yeah I, I would love to hear his thoughts on this one he's been thinking on this he's, one for a yeah, while yeah he's been making all kinds of different <laughs> faces everybody's injured every every single person on this roster I'm gonna say let me back that up Everybody on this roster is dealing with something physically. Right? Different I, levels I, I, to different it. Different levels different to it. Different okay? parts of the body. Listen, I play with dislocated shoulders. You're, I mean, you got offensive linemen playing with fingers that, do, <laughs> that don't work. You know, like, I mean, everybody has something going on, right? So the expectation of football is if, if you can play with it, you play with it, right? Um, back in the day, they used to give you additional shots to play with it. Now, my understanding is those are illegal. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you, listen. You're dealing with extreme amounts of pain all the time. So I don't think it's an injury thing. I do believe that it's a continuity thing, especially at the offensive line position. It's like synchronized synchronized swimming. Anybody ever seen synchronized swimming? Maybe once. No, okay, all right. Let's go to another one. <laughs> uh, like Jabberock. You know, you see the cats no. like down in Las Vegas, the dance cats would be dancing. Okay. No. If one person's out of sync, if, if one per- you haven't seen that? How old are you? Okay. <laughs> um, if you... You're saying it just by the name synchronized. I know twenty. So that's why I thought Jabber Rockies would be not synchronized. Okay. Synchronized okay. swimming, yes. Okay. Yes. It, or anything that's that's synchronized. Okay, and look at it. It's dancing, whatever, Dance swimming. Routine, okay. Yeah. If one person's out of whack, does it not grab your attention? Like it just looks like it just oh, the yeah. timing's off, right? It's that strolling. Yeah, yeah, just like exactly. There you go. There you go. Think you're a sorority. Okay, what are, what are you? What's, what's hey, sorority? Hey, come on, the wall Okay, no disrespect. Uh, okay, so I'm dread. I dread. Oh. Um, <laughs> so if somebody's out of whack. It throws off the whole production. It throws off absolutely everything. On the offensive line, it is the same exact way. And what these guys have been facing is teams have found out what works against them. And now, it, like you said, it's a copycat league. You're going to see it every week. Not only are you going to see it every week, if teams already have that style of defense incorporated into what they do on the normal, they're going to see it all game. And you take the 49ers, 49ers run a ton of stunts, cause a lot of problems up front in terms of communication. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're talking about stunts. Guy going, a guy who's inside goes outside, guy who's outside goes up the field, grabs the attention because he knows if I go this many steps up the field, the tackle is going to take me. That's his responsibility based upon this blocking scheme. Once I see that he commits to me, now I'm coming back around underneath and I'm gonna come right by the center. There's gonna be a gaping hole right there because everybody has already committed to blocking their areas, right? They've already committed to the blocking their scheme. So once they commit to me, now I'm going to leave that and I'm going to go to where somebody's not expecting me to come. That's caused some problems. That requires a lot of communication in terms of passing off, whether that's nonverbal communication or verbal communication, but you it's literally a dance. And if anybody's out of whack within that dance, then you have pressures. And after pressures, you get sacks. Mm-hmm. And that's what you started to see. Tyler Biotis was turning his shoulders. Okay, T. Steele started getting his shoulders turned towards the sideline. And, and you talk about last week, Against the against the Chargers or this most recent game, these guys not only were in nine techniques, much like the 49ers were. Okay, you got Bosa out, you know, Nick Bosa was lined up in wide nines. Okay, we call it a wide nine technique, which means he's about it's probably five to six feet outside of Terrence Steele and and and, um, and Tyron Smith. Well, these guys had nine techniques and they had like eleven techniques. It was some stuff that you don't even see. They're just creating stuff at this point because they understand what causes the Dallas problems. Yeah. So from those positions, now if you're the center and you know, hey, guess what? The, 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 the pass blocking is going to require us to fan right, right? We're Everybody, we need to turn the protection to the right side because that's where they're bringing everybody. Now I get so concerned about trying to go to my right that I end up turning my shoulders too much. Yep. And when I turn my shoulders too much, now here comes that stunt, and it's coming so fast that I can't get my body turned back around to actually take care of my gap responsibilities, my in my my gap integrity. I have to be there, and I have to be square. But in order to, to be there and be square – that means that you have to trust that everything that you, the guy next to you, the guy next to him is doing is absolutely correct, and you cannot get consumed in what the defense is trying to get you to do. It's like somebody literally just dangling one of them dollar bills with a string on it. It's like, you know what? I'm going to take that dollar bill. And what happened? They just pull it from underneath you, right? That's what's happening, but they have to find that continuity. And once they get that continuity, it becomes the Great Wall of China. It's just a solid wall up there, right? And that's what you're looking for. It's just not happening in the timing that everybody's wanting. 
But people have to go back and look at the timeline. Yeah. It wasn't there in camp. They weren't together in camp. And they just got back together a couple weeks ago. So it's, this is going to take some time. And there's going to be some some pressures. There's going to be some sacks. Mm -hmm. Dak has to continue to do what he did this most recent week. Understand that sometimes I'm going to have to make some plays with my feet. Sometimes I'm going to have to shake some people up off me. Sometimes i got to run and cross the line of scrimmage to cause some threats up there to slow some of this stuff down. But also one of the ways you can slow it down is by running the ball. Yeah. If they want to wide, if they want to get that wide on the line, then shoot, keep them out there and run the ball right up the middle. Yep. But you have to have a running game. You know what I don't have? What's that? <laughs> time. Oh. I ain't got time to be <laughs> waiting oh, for things to start oh, clicking. Oh. <laughs> because she got money. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm saying uh, that hopefully <laughs> it starts clicking soon. I don't know yeah. what the timetable is for a group of offensive linemen to yeah. get in sync and start yeah. synchronizing things. Mm. Um, You're going to go watch synchronized dancing now, aren't you? <laughs> You're going to do it. I know you are. going to Google You're it. You're going to go Google it. She's going to be serious? on YouTube. You don't think I know what that word is? Oh, I know you know what the word is, but do you watch synchronized swimming? Synchronization. Oh, that's what I said. You didn't hear me when I said it? Synchronization. See, I don't want to show so, off my yeah. bilingual. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, I think the bye time or the bye week could not come at a better mm -hmm. time because these guys need to rest a little bit. Yep. They need to hit the reset button and then come into next week ready to practice, <clears throat> ready to go, push that reset button for the Rams. When you saw the schedule first come out, did you think it was a good draw on the bye week, or were you no, like, "crap, this is terrible for them"? No, I actually thought it was pretty. Great. I thought it was trash. From really? the player's perspective, really? from the player's perspective, I was like, man, Why? that's too early. Why? Because maybe now after the Eagles game, you got you got to you got to play twelve straight games or, or, or eleven straight games after this. Yeah, Trail. eleven straight. And December you know is usually body? a tough month. Oh, that's when you're struggling. In this schedule, beat up have you seen a December yeah. schedule? Yeah, I have. Yeah, but I'm actually happy with it now, based off everything that that's we've dealt saying. with yeah. in the last six weeks, because uh, you learned some lessons. Yep against the 49ers yep. and now winning against the Chargers. So I think this is actually I think the perfect That's why I said pre, pre, when the schedule first came out, I was like, this is trash. Now I'm like, this is perfect. Especially <laughs> if we're trying to rest the O-line and just get them reset for being back yeah. together. I mean, like you said, they've only had one real game together. So this is good. They need the rest. Uh, it, that kind of brings me to my next point because they were getting bullied up front. Um, it, but it, it doesn't get any easier in this division. Yeah. I mean, that you you know that you're going to face that all year yeah. long. And by the way, you're about to face the best defense alignment in the world. It gets tougher week. and tougher. Yeah. But do you think for them to build that physicality, right, for, that, for those type of lines – is it the preparation? Because I was listening to Nate Newton. He was like, back in my day, you know, the, the practices were different, right? We're not getting these veteran rest days. We're not get. it's not these. It's facts. I don't want to use baby practices, but baby it's, it's a softer it's approach. It's a softer approach. Correct. And so. Uh, physically. physically. Well, yeah, I, mean, I would also have a softer approach when your linemen are getting hurt every single time and you're having to play musical chair like it's it's a tough balance to figure out yeah and it's tough because yes you do need the reps together but at the same time you wake up on the wrong side of the bed and walk out and then you're tyron smith and get hurt you know i'm not trying i'm not I, that sounds oh terrible gosh. that's no but okay, it's that, okay. We, we, i'm not we, trying we to be disrespectful <laughs> but you have to be cautious with these guys yeah. and again Everybody knows that that's no diss or disrespect to him. We love when he's healthy and full go, but history has shown that you have to be careful and, and manage them properly, mm -hmm. but it's just that it's there's, a tough there balance is, there. There's an injury management aspect yeah. to coaching, right? And they have to balance that. Now, there are a lot of rules that are in place that weren't even in place when I was playing, right? And doesn't even talk about when Nate was playing, right? But there's certain things from Nate's perspective, what yeah. he's referring to is, there's certain reps that you need to get that you can only get full speed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can take all the mental reps. You can do all the walkthroughs you want to, but certain things have to be done full speed with pads on, full contact. And that's what he's alluding to, right? When you start talking about the stunts and start talking about your responsibilities and working together as a cohesive unit up front, you only get that when you're running full speed reps. You, you do. Right, I mean that's that is it. There, how do you how do you prepare for Aaron Donald? Shoot, you better have somebody yeah. in practice that can resemble what he does. Right, right? you're gonna mm -hmm. take one of your starters and you go put him. Hey, Osa, go over there yep. and get your butt in the middle and cause some havoc. How do you get ready for Jalen Carter, Big Davis, and everybody and Josh Wed and everybody else they got in the Eagles? Well, guess what? You better be running for some full speed reps. Yeah. Otherwise, the first full speed high contact reps you're gonna get is in the game. Mm. Who do the Rams play this weekend? Upcoming Sunday. I'm looking. We have time to look right now. Let's look at that. 
Well, uh, the, we'll see how he changes Steelers. next preseason. They play the Steelers. Yeah. Play the Steelers next Sunday. <laughs> All right. So we'll see. Well, let's go ahead and take a break. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. You're watching Girls Talk Voice Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. At Jigsaw Dating, we obviously want the Cowboys to bring that sixth ring home. But to be honest, we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger. That's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation so you can date deeper. Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. Join Jigsaw Dating today, dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. You know that sound anywhere. It's the crisp crunch of that first nacho chip. With its perfect cheese to sour cream ratio sitting atop a layer of delicious beans, it's a sip away from perfection. That's what we're looking for. Add a delicious, refreshing Pepsi and we've achieved absolute nacho nirvana. Because while you can pile those nachos high with every spicy, cheesy, savory topping, there's no topping a cool Pepsi finish. Nachos, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. And the Dallas Cowboys game time powered by Lenovo, the official gaming platform and community of the Dallas Cowboys. Sign up now to compete in Madden 24 for Ooh. a chance to win two tickets and a VIP experience to a 2023 Dallas Cowboys home game. Qualifiers begin on October 6th and run through the 13th. Learn more and register at DallasCowboysGameTime.com. I'm going to put this out here before Barry Church can put this out here. Uh, we we have this show called Hit Sticks in which we play Madden. And mm -hmm. for the first time, we played against each other kind of in some um, different situations. I got my butt kicked, okay? Um, yesterday was not a, I, I, it wasn't a good day. It wasn't a good day. Uh, so when you guys see Hit Sticks, I don't want to deter people from watching it, but have some grace, okay? Uh, it was a bad day for me. You just wanted to get the first I just had to get out because Barry, Barry, listen, does. Barry yeah. is going to come out here and be like, hey, man, listen up. He, he goes a bludgering. He goes a bludgering. <laughs> and that's what he's going to say. I got my butt kicked by Barry, but listen up. I, I, there's always another day. Hmm. Is it going to happen again? Yeah, no, not not that way. Oh, trust me. When we play again, it's going to be a How full game. How bad was the loss? It was bad. Oh. It was bad. It, you, well, the, thing is, we, the thing is, we don't play full games. We play like segments. You know what I mean? Like it's like, hey, this we're gonna play so many downs of this. That's like, embarrassing. It's, yeah, it was bad. That sucks. But if he wants to see me on these still like straight up, let's film that. Hmm. <laughs> I've never played Madden, so I'm not really. DCB, you game shush it, Jim Jazz. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and talk about this defense. <laughs> Defense. <laughs> uh, I was. I was. I love the way that these guys bounce back again, like this offense, um, and holding the Chargers to just 17 points. Maybe they were averaging 27, I believe, a game. Um, but let's talk about the guys that stood out. I think Deron Bland, Marquise Bell. Um, that secondary is really making some strides, especially with you know Trevon Diggs out of the season. Um, but we heard from Al Harris today. Let's go ahead and take a listen to what he had to say. Well, the thing is, is um, you know, you never lose fact of that you lose a guy like Trey. You know what I mean? That's a difference maker, however you look at it. Um, but we're putting with putting Bland in that particular spot. Like I said, we as a defensive staff, you know, we have a lot of confidence in him. So we just, as we look, whoever goes down, hey, you plug in the next piece. Is this? Is this? No one has Trayvon's exact skill set, but how does Bland compare just as far as, because we've seen him get a lot of turnovers back there and be able to make some things happen. I, I don't compare the two, uh, so I'll leave that up to you. You tell me how they compare. I don't compare the two. Two totally different players, two totally different um, <clears throat> way that they go about looking at the game. I have to coach the two guys differently, so um, I'm not giving the comparisons on the two guys. I love how he said that. I he, love Al. I, I, Al's yeah. a real one now. Yeah, he's a real one. That was my yep. first time actually meeting him. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Al's a real one now. Yeah, he was dope. He was dope. Um, but I, I love the way that he 
didn't compare Deron Bland and Trayvon Diggs. He didn't game. take the cheese. He didn't take the cheese. Nope. Uh, but I mean, how have you guys seen Deron really evolve so far to be so young and having to fill a big shoes? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, how have you guys kind of been impressed with him so far? I think DB's done a heck of a job since he's touched foot in Dallas. Yeah. Um, I think he's done nothing but improve. Um, he still is going to have his learning movements. Mm -hmm. I think he just went against one of the best receivers this game has had in a, in a long time. Um, meaning in Keenan Allen, he's yep. been one of the most consistent, productive receivers. And I think DB honestly had a had a rough day against against Keenan Allen. Luckily, um, you <laughs> yeah. know the Justin Herbert was yeah. not on his game and had happy feet because of this yeah. defense. It was putting pressure on him. So there's a lot of missed opportunities left on the table for the Chargers, but. They were what they were, um, but I believe uh, going back, you know, to the prior week, Deron Bland and, and what he's been doing consistently week in and week out. I think he's just continuing to get better. I think you know the wisdom that he gets from from um, Al Harris and, and other guys in the room, and, and you know, I think he's a student in the game, and you can see it because he's able to see, see things and anticipate and trust his instincts because of what he's already seen on film. What the the um, what's the word I was looking for? Um, I don't know. But, yeah, so I just think that, you know, he's he's able to play fast because of his preparation mm -hmm. um, and his knowledge of the game. And that's is a testament to everybody who's had a hand on his production. For you ladies, uh, I'm going to ask a different question. We only have, like, four minutes left. But uh, th this defense, right, uh, how have you guys been impressed? And what, I guess, ha have you been your takeaways heading into this bye week from that group? Um, well, that's a tough question because impressed, impressed, Lately, I haven't been. I mean, yeah. going back to the expectations starting the season and everything we saw the first couple of weeks, how they started off the season, us thinking, okay, they've kept Dan Quinn, they've kept talent, they've added talent. Mozzie Smith was drafted. He hasn't been the guy that you drafted him to be. So, but anyways, the point is, initially, you had all these high expectations where now you could possibly turn this really, really good defense into a great defense. And it slowly has kind of been going the other way around. And again, we got to remember the Trevon Diggs injury. That was a huge hit for the defense. Now add on Leighton Vanderish being out. That has been another hit because now you're dealing with these safeties, hybrid, hybrid safeties that you're trying to position and move to linebacker so you don't really Which i think he was you, very successful with yeah. this week right mm -hmm. yeah very successful but with. but then it leaves what's happening in the secondary back there where maybe you need guys like stefan gilmore and i love the guy very very great but you see it at times where he's just he's been slow or other guys he's just outrun weak. him yeah. so for someone like him like you expected him to kind of take a step above after the Trevon Diggs injury. Again, Deron Bland, I absolutely love what he's done so far, but I think you're still seeing those like weak spots in the defense that they're they're making through. They're 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 still playing at a good level, but it's just it's no longer that great defense that we were hoping mm -hmm. to have. See, I'm honestly in the middle right now. I think one of the biggest things that the defense needs to work on is the penalties. You know, I think that there were some serious issues when it came down to the penalties for yeah. this game because you did give the Chargers some yards yeah. based on what you did there. But I will give my shout out to Damone Clark and Marquise Bell. I think they really held yes. down the fort for mm -hmm. us this week. And I think Damone Clark, I think he's going to do really well as the season goes on and advancing there. And, you know, when you're talking about Marquise Bell, Damone Clark, and having to replace um, that spot for Leighton Vanderush, I think those guys really stepped up to the plate, and uh, it was it was a good night for them. Yeah, I think uh, Damone Clark's going to continue to get better. I think he, he isn't where he wants to be. I know him as a competitor. Um, there's aspects of his game that he will improve upon and will continue to have a greater impact on his defense, but the guys that that stood out and who made this whole thing go mm -hmm. this past week was Marquise Bell at the second level, um, flying around and making the plays that he did. He pretty much negated anything that Eckler wanted to do, um, at least in the passing game. And then uh, John, uh, sorry, Big, big uh, Hankins and Osa. and Osa, Osa. Yes. both of those two on the interior. They Demarcus shut. Demarcus Lawrence, yeah. he's yeah, still showing up. He's been so good. Yep. And he's been quietly just being productive. Mm -hmm. yep. I think he's perfectly fine being the quiet guy, making plays. And but Fowler. Yep. So I mean, those guys up front. 
they shut down the running game. And when yep. you can shut down the running game of the opposing team, then you can do what you do best, which is rush the passer. Yep. All right. Well, that'll do it for our first episode together, y'all. Woo! <laughs> uh, y'all are watching Girls Talk, Boys Talk for Isaiah Stanback, Savannah Humoler, Amber Garcia, Nicole Edgerson. See y'all next week. <laughs> this has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!